and talk about a very common situation where we can have a lot of difficulty photographing our scenes. And that is the interior of vehicles. So um, one of the big problems that we can have with the interiors of vehicles uh, are is basically the exposure. Uh, this would be for daylight as, is what I'm talking about. So during daylight, we get a lot of sunshine coming into the vehicle through the windows. And so we'll have some bright highlight areas, but then at the same time, we'll have some really deep shadows uh, caused by, you know, just the configuration of the vehicle itself. And so it's not unusual to have a photograph that comes out looking like the one we have on the screen now. Much too dark in some areas and a little too bright in others. Now, if you allow your camera just to go ahead and expose for you, it's not necessarily gonna be the best result. And so you definitely wanna be checking your review screen for a photograph like this. Most likely what you're going to have to do is to do something additional, something other than just let the camera choose um, the settings because the highlight areas tend to overpower the shadow areas. So what will you end up doing? Well, one thing you could do is bracketing. We can use the plus minus button on our camera to adjust our exposure. So if our photographs are coming out too dark, we can press the plus minus button and move it to the plus side uh, on the graph. And so if you go to plus one, you'll get twice as much light. So it should be twice as bright. If you go to plus two, you should get another full stop worth of light on top of that. So you could do some bracketing. And so here we have some bracketing going on. However, we still have the problems with the deep shadows, the bright highlights, and the difference between the two. So now that I bracketed, opened up, probably two stops. Uh, I do have more light in the shadow areas, the floorboard area, but now I'm totally blown out in this area. So what would there really be the best way to cope with interiors of vehicles? It's to use electronic flash. So just go ahead and put the flash on your camera, or if you have a suitable pop-up flash, it may work. And, uh, go ahead and take a flash photograph. Now remember what we normally do for flash photography with our modern cameras is put the camera in program mode and just snap the picture, allow the camera to do the settings for us. And most of the time that's going to work. Once again, however, we can look at the review screen and if we're not getting enough light, we can still go to the plus minus button and retake the flash photograph. So exposure compensation works both in ambient light and it works with electronic flash as well. Sometimes what people will do is if they have the type of flash that has the tilting head. So I have a, an external flash and the head can tilt. They'll actually point the flash so that the light is bouncing off the ceiling inside the vehicle. And that'll spread the light out a bit more and not make it so directional. That's a thing to look at also. So how do we do the, how, what would the result be with straight flash? Here we have direct flash, all right? So whenever I work inside a vehicle, I just go ahead and automatically use flash. It's going to give me much better results a little more consistent lighting. I may still check my review screen if I think it's necessary. And if then I see there's some issues, I can go ahead and use my plus minus button, my exposure compensation. So to cope with ex exposure problems during daylight due to deep shadows, we want to use electronic flash inside vehicles. And here is the before and after kind of example. 
On the left, that's a little bit of bracketing. That's kind of the best we could get. And on the right, we can see we have much better result. Okay. Another issue that we will commonly have with vehicles during daylight is reflection on windows. So often you will be uh, preparing to take a photograph, you're looking in your viewfinder, and you may see yourself or the trees behind you reflected in the glass on the vehicle. Well, if you're gonna see that in your viewfinder, guess what? It'll be in your photograph as well. And that's not normally something that we want. So what do we do? Well, first of all, let's look at the problem. Here is a, a parked vehicle uh, on this car. The front passenger side, front seat window is down right here. This is the top edge of the glass, but the back window is all the way up. And what do we see instead of looking straight into the vehicle and seeing uh, the, the seats and more of the dash? We see what's behind us. And there's a building, there's a lamppost in this parking lot, there's a parked car, some more cars. That, that's just the reflection off of the glass that we will often see. So what we want to do is somehow cut that out. And the way to do it is to use a polarizing filter. So let me show you the photograph with the polarizing filter. Now the glass is dirty, but other than that, we can see pretty much into the vehicle now. Very faintly, we can see that lamp post that was there before and a little bit of the building, but most of that reflection has gone away. There's the before and after. So what we would want to do is if we have reflections like that, we would want to use a polarizing filter. All right, so what does this polarizing filter look like? What does it actually do? Well, it's just a filter that screws on the front of your lens. Now, the way this filter actually works is you screw it onto the front of your lens, and once you have it on the lens, it will rotate. You can actually twist the filter without unscrewing it or screwing it tighter. It just, first of all, screws on in place, and then it rotates. And you can then dial in, so to speak, the amount of polarization you need. So it's a little bit like blinds in a way. Uh, as, you, as you rotate it, you'll get more or less polarization. Now, I must say that, first of all, this doesn't always work. You actually have to have the right angle of light, right angle of reflection for the polarizing filter to be able to cancel it out or reduce it. All you got to do is look and see if it works. That's basically the bottom line. So you're in the situation, I need this photograph. Let me try my polarizing filter. You put it on, you screw it on. And then as you're looking in your viewfinder, you rotate that filter and see if you can make that reflection go away. And if you're in the right angles, it should work. If it doesn't work, then you got to change angles, perhaps. Find a different way to take that photograph. Now, the polarizing filter is really nice. It works on glass. It also works on cutting reflection and glare on water and other hard surfaces other than metal. So let's say that you have a gun in the water in front of you and you want to take a picture of the gun in the water, but the sun is shining in such a way that you get glare or even reflection off the water into your lens. You can try the polarizing filter. Put that on, turn, uh, rotate the filter itself and see if you can eliminate or at least reduce some of that reflection. I have uh, some photographs here. On this one, we're looking and we see all the trees and everything. Put on the filter, and now we can actually see through all that in the water. There's still leaves on the water, 
that's not going to change. And then here we have the reflection of the light on the water. And you look over to the right, and now you can see down into the rocks. So if there had been a gun in here in the water, it'd probably be very hard to photograph with that glare. But you put the polarizing filter on, you're set to go. Uh, hard surfaces. Now, where might this come in? Well, uh, I know that a lot of us will use a polarizing filter when we're photographing tire marks on roadway surfaces. So often at a collision scene, you will see tire marks. However, if the sunlight is uh, reflecting off the roadway toward you as you are trying to photograph them, it can be harder to see them. It can be hard to see them with your naked eye. That's why if you have polarized sunglasses, that will help you to see. Or you could actually take your polarized filter and hold it over your eye and look and be able to see more clearly if you have a reflection off the roadway surface. And then when you go to photograph that, you'd want to use the polarized filter to help you to actually see the, the true tire marks does not work off of reflections off of metal, but hard surfaces, water, and glass is where we'll find that. So that's something that every uh, CSI kit should have uh, in the photo kit, and that is a polarizing filter.